Whoa, I forgot. So this is Control, episode 26. I forgot about this room, but I thought we should talk about it. Um, this is the room before we reach Blackrock Processing, and it's one of my least favorite rooms for a couple of reasons. One reason is that we have this little clearance level we can't get through. Another reason is both of these bathrooms are empty, so why are they here? And the last reason is, look at this, we have to go through here, right? How do we get through there? Well, obviously we should follow the cable off and find where it is connected to. It is connected to nothing. Curse you. However, I do like this room over here. Just grab some loot here. This is industrial, or rather factory, um, automation. This is something very similar to the building automation that I mentioned earlier. Uh, it's a little bit more... Um, it, it's actually not more archaic, it's just that it has larger, cleaner buttons because you expect dudes in hard hats and you know, covered in smoke and using a flashlight to see them. But uh, the other thing that's worth noting is that there are these fuse boxes with like, 30 or 40 fuses in them. I think that looks great. Uh, it's really interesting. It's really rare to find a game that does multiple kinds of building automation meshes. Um, I appreciate that as someone who has actually involved in that industry. Uh, it's a strange choice on their part. This was also a strange choice. Why did you build this? This isn't how pipes look. What was your thinking here? Look at this. Wrong, wrong, and wrong. Hmm. Weird choice. I mean, obviously this is something they put together pretty fast. They didn't think anybody would notice. I am a nerd. I notice things. Anyway, now I've got to go shoot some folks. Um, I guess I can do it on camera since I'm already rolling. Keeping people alive is quite a challenge in this game. But we'll do, we'll do our best. So here we can... Oh, you jerk. Oh, I got him. So there are a lot of enemies in this area. Since I'm invincible, I'm just kind of wading through, not giving too much of a care. But we've got a couple of things like a boss here and there, and uh, those are certainly um, a challenge. These bosses are not my favorite. Uh, when you aren't invincible, it can be quite challenging to kill them without dying to the thousands of other randoms that uh, kind of clutter the area. Oh, seriously? That was great. Alright. Come on. More boss? I sort of think that maybe all the soldiers are dead because they're not helping me right now. Which implies that I didn't manage to save them. Sorry, soldiers. Anyway, it's not too long of a combat when you can just wade into it and ignore the damage. It's a little bit more challenging when you have to actually play it. Here we are cleaning up the place. Arish is up there. We're going to talk about this room in some detail, though, because it's quite interesting. This is the Atlas Chamber, which is basically a map of the oldest house made by the oldest house. I don't know why they put it here. This is this is a strange place for it, because in terms of, you know, central... You, you think that the map room should be fairly central or at least in some place important. But this is between a mining facility and nowhere. It's like just in the middle of nowhere, uh, but it's still a very cool looking room. Here we've got the Atlas itself, it's this statue. <laughs> you can see that there's light coming through it, lots of god rays. I think this looks fantastic. This kind of room is a sort of room you can only use a few times in your game because of the way that it will look repetitive if you use it over and over. But it looks amazing. Don't you think so? Of course you do. So far, I can't get this kind of uh, light effect in another engine just yet. Um, I mean, I can get some god rays, but I can't seem to, to get it to look like this. But I'm just starting out in Unreal. Maybe it'll be possible later on, and I just haven't gotten advanced enough yet. We'll find out. Uh, right, here it is. Upstairs. So I wanted to talk a little bit about faking it. 
A lot of these elements are faked. A lot of the lighting elements are faked, and I figure I might as well show you that here because it's really clear. First, we're just going to grab some loot since we happen to be in the area. During an AWE investigation, our agents discovered a light switch. Here he is talking about the ocean view. In the closet. They pulled the cord and were instantly. So here we've got this massive light coming out of that of that um, office over there, right? This light illuminates not just the whole room, but this statue. It creates those god rays we saw over there. It's an incredibly bright light, just kind of if You can see how it even hits the walls here and just shocks the whole room into existence. And it is completely faked. There's just a light source right here. You can even see the shadow of it right there. And it just fires the light in that direction. If we were to go into this office, you'll see there's no sign of anything well, even vaguely cool. like that. I'm not doing so now the obvious idea I'm is that these are the lights that the are fl that flooding this room with light, and then that light floods down there. But that's just not going to happen. Look how bright that is. This th that's not <laughs> that's that's not happening. So a lot of this stuff is faked. There are a lot of extra invisible lights that turn on when you're at certain positions and, you know, fade away as you get close and are only visible from certain angles. And that's the sort of thing you're going to have to do if you want to, if you want to have beautiful looking light like this. So we're going to go ahead and talk to uh, our favorite boy. Good talk. And then we're going to move on and shoot some dudes. Or a dude. One of the things about that conversation that bothers me is that she said, he doesn't know that I fail people. It's like, who did you fail? Are you talking about the fact that your brother got kidnapped by the government? Did you think you were going to take on the government? Like, all of it? I guess your standards are pretty high. Here we can see another of these. Uh, this is the same the same setup with the five connectors. We've seen, we've seen it a couple of times. It'll keep popping up. It's pretty nice. Here's the same exhaust pipe setup. It looks good. This room is really a great room, so it's worth talking about how it's set up. First off, I really like how as you enter it, you see the, the light through the slits here. That works out really well. But the room itself is just a standard block-based room. There's a bunch of blocks, rectangles, of different heights and uh, dimensions, and they're just kind of stacked through each other. This is a very common way to set up rooms, and you've probably set up rooms the same way. And the key to making these kinds of look, rooms look good is to control the lighting and the membranes, the, the places between them, the thresholds. So, for example, here we've got this threshold between these two blocks is blocked off by a pseudo wall, which is not a complete wall, therefore it has some style. Between these two rooms is framed by a set of pipes. Here we've got a standing element to help frame that element, that set. Over here we've got some nice uh, double wall setups with a wall and also a um, uh, cabinet, uh, what do you call it? Shelves, just shelves. A big part of how to light this sort of place correctly, though, is you've got to make sure that there is a flow to the light. And this is one of the reasons why I keep talking about how control lights things and why I'm making videos about, you know, specifically how to light things similarly. The understanding of where should be light and where should be dark, where should be brilliant and where should be in shadows is really important because it tells you where you should be looking and where you should be heading. And even if the player looks in a dark corner and walks over here and tries to see if there's anything worth taking, they're never going to get lost. They're always going to know where they should be going to the light. Arish wasn't kidding about that monster. So here we've got some dudes uh, and they are all dead. Sorry, dudes. This is the Black Rock Processing Center, and this is another example of storage. You can see that we've got all of these Black Rock things stacked up everywhere. Uh, what do you want to call them? Planks. Black Rock planks stacked up everywhere. 
storage does not necessarily have to be filing cabinets. It's whatever sh it should be. Whatever the player will buy as a repeating element. So I'm not sure I, re I'm not sure I buy them as bouncy, but I do buy them as existing. And they, uh, they serve their purpose pretty well. If we were in, like, a toilet paper factory, you could just have walls of toilet paper. The storage does just has to work. It doesn't have to be the same thing every time. It makes more sense if it fits with whatever the purpose of the room is. Can you help me find a prism? What the fuck? So here we're going to fight an enemy that I don't really remember much about. Normally I would be a little bit more careful about it, but as it turns out, I'm invincible, so I'm not too fussed. I need more bullets. You know what? I should just fling stuff at him, right? That's the whole point. Come here. Come here. There you are. Gotcha. <clears throat> let's hurry up and find Darling's lab. No, let's talk about this room first because I like it. So we talked a lot about large atriums where you've got a, a major central light source. This atrium does technically have those roof light sources, but whoa, they don't actually light anything. Look, it's dark. They're um. Oh, I think I'm. I think I'm talking into the mic a little too loud there. Sorry. The uh, the light peters out long before it hits the ground, and it provides only the most modest of, uh, you know, bounce lighting off the walls instead of some direct lighting of the floor. Instead, the lighting in this room is mostly from the storage elements, which are lit by these incredibly bright lights. The way that you light these rooms really tells the player what they should expect and what they should be looking for. The fact that this central chamber is dark tells the player that there is nothing of any plot importance in this room. Like, there might be some loot hiding in a corner somewhere, but there's nothing in here that they're going to have to do once they fought off the enemy. Uh, on another note, I like how these mineshaft carts look. These these mine rails always look fantastic. A, a full-size train has a serious problem in that it is not human scale. Full-size train tracks are things you have to like jump over. There's usually a lip that is too high for you to jump up. But with mine carts, everything is a little bit smaller, a little bit more human scale, and you can create rooms like this. I think it looks amazingly good. Um, not as like, this isn't what you would, if you were trying to take pictures saying, oh, you should play control you wouldn't take a picture of this. But it suits its purpose very, very well. Only thing I'm not sold on, why are all of these still loaded up with black rock planks? All of them? That's strange. Well, it's okay. So it has been uh, 13 minutes, so we'll get to Dr. Darling's lab in the next episode. See you then.